We did it, Reddit. <laughs> I had to start with the dumb guy. Hey there, Heather Heather. My name is Michael. Welcome to Mike's Hard Reviews. Uh, it's day 25 of 25 drinks of Christmas. We officially did it. We have done a different drink every day up to Christmas, including Christmas, for just 25 days straight. It's been crazy <laughs> figuring this out, but we did it. We're here at the end, and somewhat poetically, we're gonna do a last word variation that I came up with called a to all a good night. Props to my friend and former roommate, Justin, for coming up with that name. Uh, because I wanted to call it a Saturnalia, and he was like, to all a good night, and I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> so a to all a good night is a last word variation, which means it typically relies on equal parts in the cocktail of different ingredients. This is kind of a s sort of taking away from that a little bit, and we're gonna be mixing some things up to make it more balanced, but it's still going to include a couple of key ingredients that you find in the last word. Uh, you're going to need an Irish whiskey. Jameson is what's preferred. Uh, green chartreuse. I don't know if you can get green chartreuse in the market anymore. Back when I first started making this drink, it was actually completely out of supply everywhere. So this is an alternative called Genepi, which is really good. It's a botanical liqueur, like green chartreuse. Less complex, I think there's like, 50 some herbs in here compared to the like 150 that are in green chartreuse. So not the same, but has very similar flavor profiles. So it works just fine. We're gonna need some orange bitters, uh, some simple syrup, uh, a little bit of mead. Uh, this is the Medivinia dark forest honey mead. You want one that actually tastes like honey really is what you're going for. So anything honey flavored like that would be just fine. Um, you could substitute that for honey liqueur like Baron Jaeger and then take out the small amount of simple syrup that we're adding um, to keep the sort of balance between those elements stable. And then the last thing that we need is some uh, edible luster dust. This is iridescent luster dust. It just looks really pretty to kind of finish the whole thing off. A little bit of Christmas magic in the glass, if you will. So this is a shaken cocktail. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, most of this is in equal parts, which is nice and convenient. You're going to need an ounce of Irish whiskey. Fuck. Just because it's the last episode doesn't mean it has to go smoothly, right? <laughs> uh, an ounce of your green chartreuse or green chartreuse equivalent. We're going to need uh, just a single dash of orange bitters, which is good because this bottle's about to run out. We're going to need uh, a ounce and a half of our honey flavored mead or uh, just a regular ounce of a honey liqueur. I'm sure there are other good honey flavored meads out there, probably made by uh, Dansk Mjold. They're like a Swedish or something um, mead company. You can get them pretty commonly, but I'm not familiar with their product lines. So I just went for whatever the person at the store had recommended. For a simple element, you do not need a lot. I wouldn't even call it a full measure. We're just gonna do a bar spoon of this just to kind of wake up some of the flavors here, particularly what's in the mead because mead doesn't really quite taste like honey. It's reminiscent of honey, but it does not taste like honey. So that's gonna bring some of that character back. That's simple syrup, right? Yeah, simple syrup, yeah, just a regular simple syrup. You could also do, I guess, um, honey syrup here too, if you wanted to like really double up on the honey flavor, but regular simple syrup is enough because you've already got some of it in there. Also, I, I think I cut this out of the last episode. Make your own simple syrup. <laughs> this stuff has like a taste to it because it's like, like mass, mass produced that has like preservatives in it. You can hide it pretty easily, but like, why would you want to bother with that? It's just a huge pain. <laughs> uh, next to last, we're going to need uh, just a little bit of our luster dust. You don't need a lot of this stuff. Um, if you wanted to quantify it, it'd be like the tip of a bar spoon, bar spoon's worth. It's, it's not a lot. What I forgot to mention actually is an ounce of lemon juice. We're gonna go ahead and put some ice in that and give it a shake. Like always, we are adhering to our one spoon, excuse me, one cube cracked, one cube whole. Go ahead and cap that up and give that a shake for 12 to 15 seconds to chill and dilute. Nice. We're gonna serve this up in a coop and I'm gonna go ahead and double strain this to catch any ice chips so there's nothing interrupting the sort of iridescent glow this is gonna have. Yeah, right? It looks like liquid gold. Mm -hmm. And that luster dust really does show through, even from like a distance. Because without that in there, this would be like a, kind of like a hazy sort of yellow, but this is like this sort of like opaque color to it. It's not just because it's been shaken and aerated. It itself is like kind of glowing in gold. I love it. Uh, lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little bit of a lime garnish, or excuse me, lemon garnish here. I tried to do a fun thing where I could cut this into a shape, but 
not not exactly the easiest thing to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a little flag here and stick that on the side, just like that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a to all a good night. I'm slipping both. Well, Patty does, yeah. Yeah, I should have tried. I should have tried to cut a bow back when I was testing this. That would have been smart. Um, so it's awesome. <laughs> There's a sort of whiny kind of character, like like wine, I mean, to mead. And what that little bit of simple does is sort of embrace that. And because it's carrying honey flavors compared to like uh, um, fermented grapes, it, it gives it this really bold sort of prominence in there. But what's fascinating is that it, it isn't impervious to being manipulated by the other ingredients. You sort of get this kind of combo of the, the green chartreuse and the mead bouncing off of each other and those herbs come through like nice and loud actually, which is really good, I think. Um, it, it sort of keeps it from being too much like just a very gussied up pour of mead. Yeah, everything, everything comes through that lemon is keeping it bright and it has a little bit of tartness on the back of it which I think is the hallmark of a good last word or last word variation. It has tartness to it. This isn't as tart as a regular last word, obviously, because we've used some very much sweetened ingredients here and even added sugar to it, but it, it just presents itself in a very balanced manner. And it, it really does work. <laughs> The, the thing is too, you would think that the whiskey would have a really strong impact because um, normally a last word's made with gin and the botanicals are really the, the loud thing that comes through there. Here, not so much. What this is doing in place of a gin is contributing a strong backbone to it. You can look for it and find the impact of Jameson in this case. You can find those kind of uh, sugar cookie and like um, sort of uh, metallic vanilla notes in there, but they're not the, the key point. They're a vessel that adds a uh, body to the drink without overwhelming it. Um, I found when I was testing this that gin, the botanicals made the whole thing just too loud and kind of abrasive. It wasn't very balanced towards, you know, being able to experience all the flavors. And something like a bourbon or a scotch just kind of washed away a lot of that complexity uh, as well. So this is definitely the best way to go. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> Don't you give it a try? Yeah, sure. Nice. It's been a minute since you've been here when I'm filming to try the drinks. Yeah, um, I've been in bed. <laughs> Cause why not? Fair. I'm a working woman. Fair. <laughs> Vibes. What do you think? Oh, that's good. Mm. I like it. Yeah, it's a nice and light, right? You've had me try this before. I have, yes. Um, that I haven't, that's like, that's the finished version of it though. Mm. There were some like last minute improvements that I made to it. That's, again, a very refreshing. Mm. Yeah, it'd make a good spring drink, frankly. Spring, summer drink. Just kind of like kind of like a last word, actually. They, they just, no matter what variation you're doing on it, they kind of come out in a way where it's like, yeah, this is like refreshing and like interesting. Do you get like all the notes of like the mead and stuff mm -hmm. in there? I like, there, yeah. yeah. Which I kind of wanted to embrace that because you don't see a lot of mead in cocktails. Mm, that's very nice. Nice. That like honey aftertaste, I really like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, the, and like the wine-like character of it. Mm -hmm. is there too. And it's nice because it, it sort of uh, allows everything else to stand out from it. Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot of very standout flavors that kind of come together and play like the Ratatouille moment when he eats the cheese and the strawberry mm -hmm. and he's like, smooth jazz in the air. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that is the To All A Good Night. Uh, so aptly named and so aptly displayed is the last video in the series because it's time to say good night to 25 Drinks of Christmas. Um, not to be overly sentimental about kind of a silly prospect, but this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It really tested my skills as a bartender and a mixologist and kind of made me to a certain extent rediscover why I like doing this so much. Um, it gave me something to do and something to focus on and something that I enjoyed. Um, I've walked away with a couple of really fun new pieces of information, like all those complex syrups we made and how to you know properly rebalance things and just the sort of culinary science behind infusions like we did with the Earl Grey Martini. Um, so I wanna thank everybody for who's been watching for joining along in the series and and just for being here. It, it really means a lot to me. I hope you guys are all having a phenomenal Christmas uh, wherever you are doing it, however you are celebrating. And I will 
see you guys around. Because now that I've started, I'm not going anywhere. You're stuck with me. <laughs> Probably gonna take a break until the new year. So I might not see another video for a while there, but I'll be back eventually with some more fun cocktail ideas. Thank you all so much for being here. Have a Merry Christmas. And a Happy Holidays. And a Happy Merry, sorry, yeah, excuse me. That was, yeah, that was reductive of me. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, have a Happy New Year. Have a great night. Thank you for saying that. Yes. I, I, got, I got caught into a trap because everybody at work has been saying, like, going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And there was like a discussion with like, Arun had. He's like, I just say Merry Christmas because that's what like most people celebrate. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, yeah, no, this isn't going to just some people. This is yeah. anyone can see this. So, thank you. Mm -hmm.